Alrighty guys, welcome back. And in this video, what I want to do is show you guys how to defend whenever you have a knight and you're playing against an enemy rook in an endgame. So the first thing I want to point out is that a rook, of course, is much more powerful than a knight in an endgame. It's just much more dynamic. So the best that you can hope for most of the time is just to play for a draw. And this, of course, is a, like a grandmaster level. If you're playing against, you know, your little four-year-old cousin, then just try to fork them and win the game. But uh, most of the time in a tournament or whatever, you usually just want to play for a draw. That would be considered a successful outcome for white. So there aren't really no tricks or specific techniques, just more of ideas that you want to keep in mind if you want to end up with a successful draw. And the first idea is that it's usually best to keep your knight close as possible to your king. So keep your knight close to your king. Also, it's best to have your king towards the center. You definitely don't want to start moving it towards the corner of the board or that is just going to limit it. And with a rook, whenever you're playing against a rook in the end game, you definitely want to give your king as much options as possible or as many options as possible, however you say it. All right. so. With that being said, white to move. Let's play first knight to f2. So this, of course, is going to check the enemy king. And it also allows where if rook takes, then we just take back and draw mission accomplished. So knight to f2, of course, they don't want to take. So instead, they're just going to probably push king to e3. All right, of course, we just don't want to allow this because this is a threat right here. So let's just go ahead and take our knight and bump it back to d1. Again, following our principle that one, we are attacking the enemy king, which is always good, but also, and probably more importantly, keeping the knight close to the king. Now, king, you know, has to move away. So let's just say they go to f3, and we're just going to kind of continue this pattern we will move the knight to c3, attacking this rook right here. And another key point where I really don't need to say this explicitly, but you know, it's always a good idea, is to always keep an eye out for forks. There's gonna be a lot of time, even with experienced players, that they're gonna fall into a fork. So anytime you get a potential fork, you know, that's an obvious thing, but just wanted to, you know, remind you guys, keep it in mind. So in this case, we move to c3, attacking the rook. The rook has to move away, so let's just go ahead and slide it over to c2 where they are going to be attacking our knight. And what we want to do here, again, nothing too exciting, just plop back to d1. So now what this enemy rook can do is they can just slide over to, uh, let's say they'll slide over to e2, attacking our king. And this is another point. Whenever the rook is attacking the king, all we want to do is we're just going to move the king out of danger. So yes, this does indeed move it closer to the corner of the board, but as soon as this rook moves away, then we're just going to plop our king right back towards the center. Again, we're just going for a draw here since we more likely than not don't have an opportunity to in fact uh, win this game. So king to f1, and now what they are going to do is they're going to take the rook and slide it over to h2. Now this is actually a pretty important concept where you can see that they are basically set up for checkmate where this king is controlling these three squares, e2, f2, and g2. And now if their rook can slide down to h1, then that would be a checkmate on our king. So in this case, like I said, what we wanna do whenever this rook is gonna move away is we're just gonna take our king and slide it back over to e1, towards the center of the board, uh, close to the knight, protecting. So now, if the rook decides to slide over to h1 anyways, now we can just escape with our king. So obviously that's not gonna accomplish anything. So the rook might do something like slide over to g2, and now we can just continue following the same pattern. Uh, just make kind of a waiting move, a useless move, move the knight away. Let's say rook to b2, knight back close to the king in the middle of the board and this is essentially just a draw so again like i said no really awesome techniques where you can you know sneak or attack or you know uh force a fork or anything like that i just want to show you guys that whenever you are in this position 
where you only have a king and a knight and you're playing against an enemy king and a rook, then you're really not in the greatest position, a more defensive position, but this is how you can uh, seek out a draw if you follow these techniques. Again, make sure that your king doesn't go into a corner. Make sure that your knight is always as close to the king as possible. If your enemy king is in danger, then just move it away in the back towards the center as fast as you can. And always keep an eye out for forks that can potentially win you the game. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys later.